We start here with a standard budget constraint, call it BC naught, and a consumer who maximizes his utility subject to that budget constraint by going to a point approximately here, we'll call it point A. Now, since we're studying price changes, I want to think about a change in price, and as fairly often in this part of the course, I'm going to consider a fall in the price of X. We saw last time what would happen when the price of X fell. The affordable set would expand, because things have gotten better for the consumer, so you have expanding, an expanding affordable set, and it expands in the X direction. Geometrically, that means that the budget constraint pivots around its y-intercept. So that would be, I've done that again, pressing too hard. This would be the new, the new budget constraint, say, BC1. <coughs> now we want to talk about the possibilities for a new optimal consumption point. And in particular, I want to draw a dashed horizontal line to the right from A. To the new budget constraint. And another one vertically above A to the new budget constraint. Like so. And move the line a little bit to the left. We know that indifference curves can't cross. And therefore, we know that the new optimal point on the new budget constraint BC1 is going to have to be somewhere between this point and this point. It's not possible to draw a new indifference curve tangent to BC1 outside that isn't in between those two red circles and that's a legitimate indifference curve namely one that doesn't intersect the old indifference curve if you try to do it for example if you try to draw an indifference curve like this yeah it's tangent outside the area between the two red circles but you see what the problem is, it also crosses the original indifference curve right here. So you can't have that. That's an illegitimate indifference curve. I'll erase it. So the only legitimate new indifference curves are going to be tangent to the new budget constraint in between those two red circles. I'm going to divide the area in between the two red circles into three different parts. This one, this one, oops, sorry, and this one. Now let's discuss the middle part. If the new indifference curve ended up in the middle part, for instance, if it ended up something like this, then the new optimal point here is to the right of A and it's above A. Being to the right of A means it has more X than A does. And being above A means it has more Y than A does. Therefore, at that point, you'd have X going up and Y going up. Indeed, I think you can see if the new point is anywhere in this middle region, the middle region lies to the right of A, so it corresponds to more X, and it lies above A, so it corresponds to more Y. So anywhere in this middle region, the middle bracket that I've drawn, 
if you end up there, the consumer has chosen to respond to the decrease in the price of X by increasing purchases of X and increasing purchases of Y. When X and Y move in the same direction like this, X and Y move in the same direction, we say that X and Y are complements. Now let's turn our attention to the other two bracketed areas. For example, the one that's more to the right. If you had a consumer who didn't end up where I drew the point before, didn't end up here with, didn't, didn't have this kind of indifference curve, but instead had this kind of indifference curve, then he'd end up at a point like this. Now clearly the consumers that are drawn in these two weird colors, they can't be the same consumer because those indifference curves are inconsistent with each other. If you extend this, this indifference curve up like that, and you extend this one down like this, you see they would, they would intersect, and the same consumers in difference curves can't intersect. So what I'm drawing with these, these different uh, colors, these non-black colors, are different people. They're not the same person. So if you had the, the person that, that intersected at, uh, at, the, at this point over here, let me get the color right, at this point over here, Well, that point is to the right of A, but it's also below A. I any point in this third bracketed area is to the right of A, which means X has gone up. But it's also below A, which means Y has gone down. So X and Y here have moved in opposite directions. If X and Y move in opposite directions, then we call X and Y substitutes. So in this right-hand bracketed area, X and Y would be substitutes. Finally, let's go to the smallest bracketed area on the left. If you had a consumer whose indifference curve look like this. Then his optimal point would be here. Now clearly this can't be the same consumer as, as the other two indifference curves I drew because I've already shown that it would intersect the kind of green color indifference curve. But note that it doesn't intersect the black indifference curve, the one that goes through point A, the original indifference curve. So the purple one is a legitimate indifference curve. It just is a different person than the one who generated the green one or the light blue one. For X and Y combinations in, in this bracketed area, we see that X has gone down from point A because from point A we've moved to the left. Y has gone up point A. So we have X going down and Y going up for this person. And that means that X and Y move in opposite directions. So according to the definitions in the middle of the screen, X and Y would be substitutes. So what we conclude is that X and Y are substitutes here. and here, and X and Y are complements here. One final note about the spelling of the word complements. There is another English word spelled this way.
the word that's spelled with an I denotes something nice that you say to somebody else when you give someone a compliment. The word that's spelled with an E is what we're talking about, things that go together. So don't confuse these two English words that are pronounced the same way. They're not spelled the same way, they're spelled differently.